So today I've got another tutorial based on a request. Jack requested an accordion menu tutorial on one of our previous video comments. And Sherry in our Facebook group also requested the same thing. So I thought this was perfect timing to show how to make an accordion menu with animations in Flinto for Max Behavior Designer. If you have a tutorial that you would like to see, leave it in the comments or post it on our Facebook group. And I'm posting new tutorials every weekday. So subscribe if you wanna see all of them. Let's set up this accordion menu. I've built a simple UI here that represents like a website where you can purchase products. So we've got products on the right and a menu on the left for filtering the products. First thing I wanna do is make this product grid scroll. So it's inside of a group and I'll turn scrolling on the group by clicking vertical under group options in the inspector. Then I'll just adjust the group size so that it hits the bottom of this white area. And let me open the preview and just verify that that scrolls correctly. Okay. Now let's set up the accordion menu. I've got three headers representing different categories you can filter on. And then I've got the content that will be revealed when you expand those headers. And it's just floating around here. So let me show you how I'm gonna set this up. So this one is called size content. So it's gonna go right below the size header. And what I'm gonna do is hide all this content by turning the group, this group into a clip group. And I can do that also under group options by under this overflow heading, clicking clip. When clip is enabled, resizing the group will actually clip the group rather than resize the contents. So I can drag this all the way up from the bottom until the height is zero. Now you can't see it at all, but it's all contained inside of that clip group that's hidden just beneath the size heading. So let's take the next one, category. And I'll put that right under the category heading, turn on clip and scale it up from the bottom until the height is zero. Now the category one is hidden just below the category header. And the last one is color. It's hiding out over here. I'm just gonna drag that below the color heading, turn on clip and drag that all the way up until you can't see it. Okay, now all the category or all the content for these different sections is hidden under their respective headings, ready to be revealed. Now, before I set up the animation, I just wanna put this stuff into a scroll group. So I'm gonna select the three headings and I want to include the three content items as well that are hidden. So those are harder to select in the canvas, but I can just hold command and add to my selection here in the layer list. Make sure that I add those three content groups. Now with all of those selected, I'll click scroll group in the toolbar. That'll put a group around all of them and turn on scrolling. Now I want this scroll group to hit the very top of this white area, so I'll drag that up. And I want the bottom to hit the bottom. So let me drag this, which initially drags the blue content size, but I wanna drag the one beneath it, which is the group size. Drag that all the way down to the bottom of the white area. And now let's open up the preview and just make sure that this scrolls as expected. All right, and there's not much in here, so there's not much reason for it to scroll, but when you expand the color section, there's a lot of colors and they'll go off the bottom. Okay, now I'm ready to create a behavior that will do the animations and interaction to create this accordion menu. And I could create that behavior on this scroll group, but by adding an additional group around the scroll group, we'll actually be able to make the scroll group part of the behavior, which will be useful when I expand the color section because it's so tall that it goes off the bottom. I'm actually gonna want to adjust the content size of the scroll group in the state where color is expanded. So to be able to tweak the scroll group in the behavior, I need to put another group around it. And this new group I'll call accordion, and I'm gonna add a behavior on that group. So I'll click behavior in the toolbar. And now I'm in the behavior designer, just focused on that sidebar. And I've got my initial state. I'm gonna to click to add a new state. And this state will be uh, when category is expanded. So I'll just call it category. And now I just expand the category section. And I do that by moving size and color down. So I'm gonna double click to click through the scroll group and select these two rows. And I'm gonna move them down. However, there's those two hidden content groups and I don't wanna forget those. So I'm gonna undo Command Z. And I've still got those two rows selected but I wanna make sure that I take the size content and color content along with me as I drag these down. Well, I actually don't know how far to drag them down. I should have expanded the category content first. So let's do that. I'll select category content and I'm going to, so it's, remember it's the height is zero, which makes it totally hidden. I'm gonna drag this down so that the height 
is now 200, which covers all the content. So now the content is revealed. And now I can select these um, two headers and make sure again to select the hidden content for those headers. Now I can drag them up because I can see exactly where the content of category ends. Okay, that looks about right. Now if I click on initial, click back to category, and if I hold shift, I can see it in slow motion just to test out the animation and make sure it works. So the one thing I'm noticing is everything looks great except this plus button, I want it to turn into an X. So I'm gonna rotate it. I'm selecting the plus, then I'll hold command to rotate it. And if I hold shift, it'll rotate in 45 degree increments. And so I'm just gonna rotate it 45 degrees. And that makes it look like an X showing that you can tap here to close it. Okay, now let's repeat the process. I'll go back to the initial state and create a new state based off of that. And I'll name this one color. And let's find the color content and expand that. So the color content is hidden, zero, zero height. Let's expand it down so that the height of this clip group covers all of its content. And this is the one I was talking about where it actually extends below the, uh, the scroll group. So I'm going to adjust this blue rectangle, which is part of the scroll group. And that's going to accommodate the additional content that sticks off the bottom. So if the height of a scrollable area is changing, you wanna change the scroll content along with it, and you can do that in the behavior designer. Okay, so colors all the way down there, and the other header, which was size, I can't see it now because it's behind that content, but I can select it here in the layer list. I've got size content, and this group here is the size header. And what I'm gonna do, because it's, I can't click it because it's behind that stuff, is I'm gonna nudge it to the left with my keyboard, and now I can click it, and more easily drag it down. And then I'll just drag it back into position underneath that. Oh, sorry, I need to actually drag it all the way below here. All right, and now I see that the content needs to even be a little bit higher to accommodate that header at the bottom. So I'll just drag that down. And this ensures that when I get to this state, I can scroll and, and access the very bottom of this content. Okay, let's set up the plus to X animation. Just rotate this 45 degrees. And now back to the initial state, I'll create a new state based off of that. And this one is size. This one's easy to do because it doesn't push anything else down. So I'll just find the size content, drag it down so that it's all revealed, and then click the plus, rotate it 45 degrees. There we go. So if I click back to the initial state, we can see that animation. You can see all the different animations. Cool, so it's looking good, but I don't have any links, so I can't test it out in the preview yet. I need a way to get from the initial state to the other states and back. So I'll select category here from the initial state, click create link, and this will take us to the category state. Clicking color, we'll have a link going to the color state. And size, link to the size state. Now I'll go to the category state, and if I tap the category header while I'm in the category state, that should go back to the initial state because that will close that, that section. And if I click color, it'll take me to the color state. If I take si click size, it'll take me to the size state. Okay, now I'll go to the next one, color. Tapping category, we'll go to category. Tapping color, we'll go back to initial because that's the open one. And tapping, whoops. And tapping size, we'll go to size. Okay, last state. Tapping category goes to category. Tapping color goes to color, and tapping size closes that going back to initial. Okay, I think I've got all the links hooked up. I'm gonna exit out of the behavior designer. I'll open up the preview, and let's test it. So there's category, I can open and close it. Color, I can open it and I can scroll down, close it, and I can open size. Now from size, if I go to color, that works. From color, if I go to category, from category if I go to size. So any combination of these works. And that looks great. So the scrolling works nicely along with this effect because we accommodated the changing content size, specifically with the color one. And so you can see how creating a behavior and adding a few scroll groups like this can really bring a mockup, a static mockup to life in just a few minutes. And it's a very useful way to wrap your head around a UI that you've created especially if you're sharing it with other people on your team. This is a much more convincing communication tool than just seeing that static mock-up.